Aloha, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is Sprinklebeard. We stream every day except for Sundays over at twitch.tv backslash Sprinklebeard from about 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you like the interaction or if you have any questions, feel free to visit us over there. Give us a follow over there. Sub if you're really feeling generous. Today, we are going to be talking about Fire Knight's Castle. So as I do these reviews, we go to the hardest version of this boss to show what to expect in the worst case scenario. Uh, we're also going to be briefly covering over all the gear that can drop, what champions it might be better on, or what style of play it might be better on. If you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, as well as when we think the best time to fight some of these dungeon bosses is. So we've already covered over the Ice Golem and Dragon, who's kind of the easiest. Fire Knight, to me, is kind of the most fun of the bosses so the fire knight puts up this giant shield so we need multiple attack hits to break through it but there's a lot of like shenanigan ways to get through it and then there's one champion specifically in the game uh that hyper trivializes it and then there's two other versions that are rare and uncommon that make this fight significantly easier as well so we're going to be going over those today um First things first, let's get into the artifacts that can drop from Fire Knight. So Fire Knight can drop the Fury set. It's a four-piece set. Damage increases as HP decreases. Because this set is like kind of, uh, in a lot of other video games, we call it a hyper style. They have to have really low HP, but then survive kind of indefinitely. Yes, there's champions that can take advantage of this, but it's hard to reliably depend on that maybe if you had like an unkillable team where their their hps are constantly at one maybe the fury set has good potential there but for most cases and most players they do not want to play with low hp because it only takes that one attack that ignores unkillable or your character gets stunned or the the champion that's placing the unkillable gets stunned that the set then just instantly goes to, to waste, right? Next is the curing set. It's a 20% bonus heal. Most players would think this is amazing on healers. However, from what I've understood, this is just an additional 20% on to their heal. And what we mean by that is if your character does a 35% heal, it will do an additional 20% of that 35. So it's, it's multiplicative, not additive. Additive would be if it was a 35% and then took it up to a 55%. Multiplicative would be that uh, you would add 7 because uh, 20% of 35 is 7. So uh, it would take it from a 35 to a 42% heal. I'm not sure how accurate that is. Unfortunately, I don't really have a champion that just nonstop heals and only heals. A lot of the champions that do this uh, use continuous heals instead. So the curing set wouldn't be great on those champions. The curing set, unfortunately, is kind of one of the weakest sets in the game currently. Immunity. Immunity for two turns. This means that your character uh, cannot receive debuffs for two turns at the start of combat. This is a best in the arena set. However, like the higher up in arena you get, eventually they usually have a buff stripper or, uh, you know, one champion being immune probably isn't going to change a whole lot. But just a heads up that, yes, you'll probably see that a lot in the arena. Or if you're wondering how people are getting that buff, uh, it's from Fire Knight here. Fire Knight drops some of the best sets. Immunity is definitely up there in our top five sets of the game for arena shield plus 30 percent hp uh ally shield for three turns this is great on your massive hp champions like miscreated monster uh ver soul lord champfort somebody that you really really want to stack hp on this can give all your allies a shield equal to 30 percent of that champion's max hp Again, most noticeable in the arena. It is not only arena, but obviously once you get through the first wave, you lose all the buffs uh, like in dungeons and stuff. So not really the greatest dungeon set. Definitely uh, great in things like arena, uh, maybe even spider. I, I would not use that in spider, but maybe, right? Maybe. 
crit damage. The more damage you do, the better your champion is. And it's a two-piece set. So this crit damage set is by far when you need a champion to deal more crit damage. It is the most reliable set that there is. So it's absolutely fantastic for that reason. Next, we have the Frenzy set. 10% turn meter boost for every 5% HP lost. If you have... She's down here. Uh, probably. Someday come. Go ahead, baby. Uh, this set, it's difficult to use effectively because the higher level that you get in play, the more often that you don't want to lose the sequence of turns that your characters are going in eventually. And I haven't made a video on this. We will talk about speed tuning about getting your champions to go one, then two, then three, then four, and how detrimental it can be that when one, then three, then two, then four go, how it can really mess up damage profiles or uh, mess up the sequence further. So then it continuously becomes one, then three, two, four. Uh, and then eventually it gets as bad as, three, one, two, four, and you know, everything gets out of sorts. So I don't know any champion that takes great advantage of this. However, maybe a champion that either sacrifices their own HP or a champion that you need going very, very frequently, but is often a common target. So I would never put Duchess Lilla two in this, but Duchess Lilla two is something that every champion on against her team has to attack this legendary demon uh, constantly, you could take advantage of that where she's getting off more heals, more shields and stuff. Regeneration heals by 15% every turn. This is an amazing set. However, you do get a set from the clan boss that's a two-piece set that technically is like slightly better and you're going to use that more often. Understand, though, if you want a champion that just somehow never dies, the regeneration set is a very value, viable set. I would not say that it's bad. I just would also say don't stress yourself building it. And as long as you keep up with your clan boss, you'll kind of get a, a better version of the set anyways. The stun set has an 18% chance to place a stun debuff. This is considered one of the best and scariest sets in the game because it takes champions that should not have the ability to stun and it gives them a, what's that, a one in six, roughly one in five uh, chance to stun anybody that they hit. Most often, we pair this on champions that attack everything constantly. So I wouldn't put Skull Crown in it, but Skull Crown, Bellower, Silar, champions that have an AOE on their A1 greatly take advantage of the sunset and try to just stun everything on their opponent's side of the field. It is most noticeable in Spider. So if you feel like you're struggling in Spider, uh, some of those champions I named or that concept of a champion that hits everything constantly. So Candle Guard would be another example. Um, Elhain would even be an example of somebody that you could put in the sunset and just try to lock lock down as many champions as you possibly can. Or spiderlings as you possibly can. The Savage set ignores 25% of the enemy's defense. Again, this is one of the most amazing sets in the game. I currently don't even have a champion equipped in the Savage set. I just don't know if I've been getting enough of this set for me to depend on using it but ignoring 25 percent of the enemy's defense you will have a great opportunity to do a massive amount of damage so when would we want to go into fire knight honestly fire knight i think is one of the more advanced dungeons you really just need the right champions to go in here and conquer it frequently if you got somebody like cold heart or a lore super early you could more realistically go into this dungeon much more early than other players. And again, as we've talked, there's some really amazing sets in here. It is again, situational though, right? Each account is different depending on what champions you have. If you don't have the right healers or if you can't get through the waves with a cold heart, it doesn't matter, right? 
Uh, so use your best judgment. Cold Heart is also kind of an end game champion. Even if you get her very early, it's going to be hard to build her in a way that she does what you see other end game Cold Hearts doing. So don't necessarily depend on that as a like, oh, I got Cold Heart. I can in instantly do this dungeon. She helps significantly. She helps a lot. Not a one person counters the entire dungeon. As you start to get three star gear, you should start phasing out one and two star gear. As you get down to the point where you're getting four star gear, you should start instantly phasing out all two star gear. Uh, the moment that you're getting five star gear, start trying to phase out your three star gear as quickly as possible. I will say four to five star gear is enough for you to gear your champions to take on any challenge in this game. So if you're like, oh, I really want to work on my void keep dungeon four and five five star gear is plenty gear the stats are good enough that you can go and work on a very effective team to clear higher and higher in or i guess deeper and deeper in those uh keeps it just it depends on what you're aiming after your ultimate goal should be aiming around fire knight 20 here because uh, this is the first place where you can get reliable five to six star gear, and it makes it very easy to get really big power spikes on your account. I am still at a point where I keep a lot of five star gear if all the stats on it are very good. Uh, the biggest reason that's great about Fire Knight is that when you're playing through the campaign, you can get things like the Fury set or the Curing set, but they will not be blue quality or higher except for like very, very rare circumstances. In the Fire Knight, he only drops blue quality and better. So he drops rare, epic, which is purple, and then legendary gear, which is that uh, golden border. And this is where getting those extra stats or extra substats gets very, very easy and reliable for a lot of players uh, to get their biggest stat bonuses and whatnot. So without further ado, we are, I don't like that expression. Uh, let's not delay any longer. We're going to jump into Fire Knight 25 here. Now, a little uh, thing that I've been saying every video and you think I would get ahead of it this time, but I did not. Most players do not farm stage 25. Yes, it is the best chance for you to get six star gear and to get legendary gear, but the, the result of it is kind of negligible. It's about a 1% bonus to get uh, six star gear. A lot of players say for their best gear, they farm stage 24. And then for tournaments and dungeon diver events, right, where you need a lot of points for things like that, uh, they actually farm stage 20 because the amount of energy is much more useful. Right now, my energies are messed up because super raids is on and I do use super raids re like very reliably. So this is what your energy counts should look like. I'm sorry. I didn't realize I had left that on for so long, but uh, we are going to be doing a super raid because they're great. And it's something new in the game, like relatively like last two or three months. And it's amazing. So I do want to show that off. Uh, we are going to be fighting on the highest difficulty. We're doing this so you can see what the boss and if the boss has minions, what in the most difficult circumstance that will look like for you. So here, uh, my team construction, sir, <laughs> my team construction is based upon Mashalad Fearing, and then I have a bunch of turn meter reduction with Allure and Blind Seer that greatly help me stay ahead of my opponents, as well as just deprive them from turns. Uh, I have Ferrikin the Fat. He's actually one of my biggest thing that helps me shield break reliably. Um, and then Gensen. Allure, Blind Seer, the three of them each have an A1 where it attacks three times. When we get to the boss, you're going to see how critical that is and how wildly useful it is. So here, getting through the waves, now depending on what affinity you're fighting, these waves will look different. Uh, the best advice that I have for you guys is use whatever tactics you have to help you clear out the waves. 
An AOE defensive down is an amazing tool that will help you chew through waves very quickly, very reliably. It does just depend on what champions you have available. Again, certain champions can make thing, certain content much easier, much more consistent. It does depend though, because not everybody gets the same champions. Even when it comes to rares, it's, it's not a guarantee that, oh, just pull void shards until you get cold heart and everything will be fine after that. You know, the, the game is based upon its randomness and it, it's what makes the game super amazing, but also very frustrating for some players because when they're like, oh, I just need cold heart and then I can do fire night. Yes, cold heart will make this fight extremely easy. Oh, wow. That's that was unexpected. Uh, but yeah, this is the importance of having a reviver, not depending on just one champion, especially for fear. If I had an AOE stun, maybe that would make this fight a lot more reliable. Um, it does depend. Get out of here. Uh, so here I am trying to let certain characters like Mashalad or Allure get the killing blows on some of these champions or even Genshin because they're masteries. This gives them a bonus to speed. So I don't want my support champions that don't get a bonus for getting the killing blow to deliver that killing blow as much as I can help it. it it's not wildly um, necessary, but it is a little optimization that when you do masteries, it is something for you to keep in the back of your mind or think about and, you know, utilize where you can. You also might be noticing that I'm not using Mashalad's A3, and that's just because his A, uh, his combo with his A2 and his A1 is just so good for AOE clear that I want to focus much more heavily on that for clearing this content. The other reason that I'm going after the vampire is I believe I, I can't remember this vampire specifically. I, I mix up the spirit and the force one all the time, but uh, one of these vampires has an anti revive in their kit. And because that's burned me once or twice when I'm playing through this content, I tend to focus on them and we are doing these waves manual just just because right. We're, we're doing a video. I enjoy playing the game. Uh, it, I can only watch auto for so long before I'm like, I could do this better, even though I'm technically doing it slightly slower since I'm having to think in between every single attack. For you guys, if you were worried about doing 25, these two heal based upon their max HP. One of the few times that destroy HP gear could be useful or realistically, there's two healers in this wave that you should be targeting down first. However, they do have to crit in order to heal, and right now they are not critting, so, uh, yeah. To me, what makes uh, Raid Shadow Legends kind of like one of my favorite games is... They did, did do a very good job that all the dungeons and all the bosses do have a different mechanic that there's not really a one champion fits all content. However, you will see Mashalad in a lot of my videos, and it's just because his, his kit is way too reliable. Uh, An AoE True Fear is just obnoxiously powerful. Uh, for you guys playing, it might be better for you to have a defensive champion, somebody who increases the defense of everybody to help your team survive longer, or a good AoE healer or buffer might be good. So, the first thing we're going to talk about on this champion is that he has a shield of 12 on the highest difficulty. On all the other difficulties, it goes down to about 10, and when you first start off, he has a shield of 5 which is very easy for you to break through. And then I believe as you climb through the tower, it goes from like five to seven to 10, and then eventually 12 at its most difficult. So this means having champions that attack three times at random or four times at random are going to be extremely useful 
on Fire Knight, the deeper in you go. So specifically, Fire Knight 20 has a shield of 10. And I really want to point that out because no, you will not be seeing 12 on like Fire Knight 5. He's going to have like a shield of 5. So, all turn meter reduction effects are reduced by 50% when used against this boss. This is something they did for the bosses uh, from 21 to 25. So it makes him a little bit harder. However, I do have a lore and Blind Seer, both whose A1s reduce turn meter pretty reliably. So that's not something that I need to fear too much. Damage from skills that scale based upon enemy max HP. Again, this is a plus 21 uh, to 25 uh, dungeons makes it significantly harder for you to just hyper burst them down with champions like Cold Heart or Royal Guard. However, if you have those champions and it's prior to, uh, if it's dungeon 20 or like higher, I guess, like, you know, one through 20. I don't know, how do you guys read dungeons? You go from one to 25, like I do. So I think about you going lower and lower into the dungeon, or do you think of it going upwards like a tower? Let me know in the comment section. Uh, but that, yeah, you'll, you'll do less damage. He's immune to all the hard CCs. You can't put him to sleep, fear, provoke, blah, blah, blah. You can't increase his cooldowns. Can't transfer a HP or uh, balance his HP in any way. Uh, this is common on all bosses, so that's why we're just kind of brushing it off. Cloak of Fire starts the battle with a Divine Shield. While active, the shield reduces the damage Fyro receives by 80% and prevents Fyro from receiving any debuff or being affected by other skill effects. This shield cannot be removed by skills that remove debuffs. Each hit Fyro takes decreases the strength of the shield, and the shield will be broken if it hit, is hit enough time. However, the shield regenerates each turn. Each of Fyro's turns, specifically. If Fyro starts a turn with a shield active, Fyro will attack all enemies one time. The attack will decrease each enemy's max HP. Fyro also heals at the start of every turn. The value of the heal and the damage dealt increases according to the strength of the shield at the time of the attack. So it is imperative for us to break this shield. Otherwise, he gets an extra attack in. It reduces our maximum HP, meaning it makes it easier for him to one-shot us. And... Uh, it heals him, right? So a lot of things to fear if we do not get this counter down consistently. Next, attacks all enemies. Places a 30% speed decrease for three turns. This can be the absolute death of you. Being faster than Fire Knight, who I believe is the slowest of the bosses, and he's the most susceptible to turn meter burn. Now, a lot of the potion dungeons are equally susceptible, but Fire Knight is where uh, stopping him from ever getting a turn is currently one of the most effective tactics available against him. Then his A1 is attacks all enemies, decreases enemy max HP by 15% of the damage dealt. And don't forget that he has another skill here that decreases your max HP if you do not break his shield. So here with Blind Seer, instead of putting up her shield, now if you cannot reliably break this, then by all means, you might wait for his turn meter to be fuller before we cast this. But this is where having your supports with a very fast speed is in very is a very very helpful skill here if you're on auto my Genson might use one of these other two attacks but that does not help me break through his shield we do want to uh use our three attacks whenever we can here Mashalad gets an extra turn so he doesn't get any extra turn meter and even though Mashalad only attacks once him increasing our speed and our crit damage lets me work him into this team comp. As you can see, though, since he's my highest damage dealing champion, he just dealed 4,000 damage with the shield up. We need to get this shield down. Allure is kind of in that same boat. If you have her on auto, she might use these other skills that attack one time or attack two times, but we need that shield broken down instantly. So attacking three times at random is the way we want to go. Now here I have the benefit that I intentionally made sure that uh, Farrakhan and the Fat had this team attack. This is a super easy way to break through a shield. I would not have multiple champions 
with a team attack, but one, maybe two, you can get away with pretty reliably. Uh, for the purposes of breaking this shield that down, though, I am not going to use his A3 right away. Because I want to show that we can, you know, get through. And this is just with champions being fast enough. And here we're going to rely on our turn meter burn. Now, because Blind Seer is not as reliable as Allure is, I am going to shield up because I don't want to be taking that damage from him. But now that his shield is open, he is susceptible to debuff. So we can start debuffing him. And now that his shield is down, we can also burn his turn meter. So we got some critical hits. And because Allure has a guaranteed turn meter burn on her A1, we are able to do that. And then this is where I'm going to use that team attack to help Allure get in extra attacks to help control uh, Fire Knight for as long as possible. Now that Allure has got him down to about half, as long as Allure crits, he is perpetually locked. I have her fast enough. And with the speed buffs that she's getting from Mashalad and from the extra turns of Farrakhan, the fat, I can make sure that the Fire Knight never gets a turn again. And this is going to be best practice for you guys. I would not depend on... Uh, th this is by far one of the most dependable strategies. If you were going to go for a non-turn meter burn, bringing in somebody like Mashalad would be kind of insane. It would not be reliable. It would not be very fruitful. You need as many attacks to break through that shield as consistently as possible. Or you would want to make sure that your team is constantly being sped up. Ideally on this team, I want to bring in a speed down somewhere. Um, Genson right now is my uh, AOE defensive down and very reliable at that. So ideally eventually maybe blind seer might be the champion that I could ditch out if I wanted my time to be faster on this uh, boss. And I would try to bring in a speed down because speed down with turn meter reduction is absolutely brutal. It just means that he will absolutely never get an attack again. And even though you can see with his 50%, where is it here? The 50% turn meter reduction like, if I reduce his turn meter, it is reduced by 50%. Allure and Blind Seer have enough turn meter reduction that's stopping him. Coldheart has a, uh, a single attack that can fully deplete his turn meter. But as well, that we have Ferric in the Fat, it lets Allure get in these extra attacks every couple of turns. It means that I personally never have to worry about uh, Fire Knight ever getting an attack. For you guys that are newer players to the game, and maybe you don't have a lore, maybe you don't have Cold Heart, this fight is going to be more challenging for you, or it's going to take longer to get a good solid team. I would say to focus on uh, maybe your healing or your ability to uh, shield your team. So things like defensive up, strengthens, attack downs will help you greatly survive through this fight the truth of the matter is this boss is one that you can honestly ignore he doesn't have any wildly amazing gear sets that you absolutely have to have um until you get to like in the 20 dungeons range uh even things like the sunset or uh things like uh, what was the other one? The immunity set. Even though they're great in the arena, they're not going to be great for you in the early arena. They're going to shine much higher up in the arena levels. So if you're wondering, like, when is the appropriate time or, oh, man, I don't have champions with good turn meter burn. By all means, just ignore Fire Knight. He's not critical. Um, he does drop good sets and eventually he becomes a fun fight where you get to play against him. As you can see, though, it only took two champions really to lock him down. Maybe you could say three since Farrakhan is cheating and getting the extra attack out of the, the allure. This is also where two cold hearts uh, can just take turns using their A3 and fully depleting the target's turn meter is a reliable way. So here we have super raids on. So because we have super raids, we actually got two pieces of gear because we spent double the energy here. 
Um, however, for me right now, five star blue gear is just below me. Uh, I, I can't keep any of this stuff. So we're just going to sell it right away, which is great for me. Um, however, you as a newer player, this curing shield with an HP percentage and speed would be an amazing piece for most people, even though the curing set isn't amazing. So what we mean by that is I would not focus hard on getting that four piece set bonus. However, it still has the right substats. This would still be great on an HP champion, right? Somebody that you need really high on HP and bulky. This is great on majority of supports. We want them to live longer and go faster. There's plenty of champions that could take advantage of these stats without it being uh, detrimental, right? So let's talk over some of the hard counters because that boss specifically has a champion that hard hard counters it in allure so let's talk about allure real quick allure has an a1 that attacks three times at random decreases the target's turn meter by 25 percent on each hit this is the big thing that lets her because ultimately she's decreasing uh his turn meter by about 75 percent as long as you can guarantee that she's going to crit makes this very very reliable and the fact that it's an attacks three times makes the skill super amazing at destroying the Fire Knight. We've mentioned the name Coldheart numerous times. So if you have Void Shards and there is a times two event or there is maybe a 10 times and you really want that Void Legendary, pulling your Void Shards and if worst case scenario, you get Coldheart. She is kind of like a legendary trapped in a rare's body and stats. Uh, but she has an it attacks four times at random and she has a fully deplete the target's turn meter by 100% and has a 30% chance of increasing uh, the critical hit damage. This makes her very, very reliable for things like Fire Knight or eventually our next dungeon, Spider. Other champions that you could use as well, I mentioned that there is an uncommon that does something similar. Now, this is one of those things you would be bringing him for the boss, not the waves, right? But Armager is considered one of the best champions in the game in terms of uncommon because of what his kit does. Just like Allure, he has a, I attack a champion one time and decreases the target's turn meter by 30% if this attack is critical. So when you're getting four to five star gear, you can easily gear him up in a way to uh to pleat the target's turn meter by 30 percent and he's a different affinity than allure so this could help you out with your force uh boss if you didn't have cold heart or if cold heart needs support on the uh force fire knight there are other champions in the game that do have turn meter reductions but they just don't have a kit that is as reliable i am not necessarily proclaiming that armager would be the best for fire knight but he is a way for you to control turn meter very, very reliably. And for newer players, that is something that everybody has access to Armager. So it could be a champion that you bring in him and then four other champions really very good at things like Fire Knight. Just to get your mind thinking in a little bit of different ways, certain champions like Apothecary, right? He's a support healer that causes your team to move faster but on his A1, he has an attacks three times at random. Things like Kale who ha or Gallic, who has attacks four times at random on a certain skill, is a great way for you to deplete that shield very, very quickly. And even though you're not landing the debuff of some of these skills, the more important thing for a lot of these players is making sure that you cast that skill when you need that shield broken, right? When you need that shield open, uh, I'm looking for a specific champion and I don't see it. So he must be in the Banner Lords. Uh, nope, I'm blind. I'm blind. There he is. He's way off to the left. I am blind. Uh, Using these skills, even though you can't provoke the boss, right? An attacks four times at random is a very, very useful skill to help you chew through that shield. 
if you think about it this way, right? We just fought the hardest one and he has a shield of 12. You would only need three champions with an attack four times at random to pop open that shield. And then everybody else could just do whatever they want. Um, or that's when you can get in all of your damage very, very quickly. Understand there is even champions that hit more than three or four times. It is pretty rare though. And I wouldn't depend on trying to get Brachus, the shapeshifter who can hit six times on one attack. But if you do have Brachus, Fire Knight might be more easily accessible to you than some of the others. And that's also where you're, if you have like revivers, taking Brachus even into wrong affinity is going to be advantageous for you because of his attacks six times onto uh, one champion, right? Um, attacking six times, even though if they're all weak hits, which would be terrible, right? If you're fighting a spirit version of Fire Knight, it, you're still hitting him six times. That's a great way to break open that shield for the rest of your team or might let you play with one or two other champions that might not be as great into Fire Knight, but maybe provide you with the healing or the turn meter burn that locks the Fire Knight ev out of ever getting a turn. So guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. The next video is going to be the one exception video that we do where I am not able to fight uh, the boss at level 25 because I'm just not powerful enough. <laughs> so guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was very helpful. If it was, please hit a like button down below or consider subscribing for more raid content from us. Or if you want to talk to us and have more interaction with the community, join us over at twitch.tv backslash sprinklebeard. We have links to our discord over there as well. But until that next time, ta-ta.